Good evening, everyone. Peter forgot to mention that uh, if, if we can put your telephones on uh, vibrating mode, it will be good because we don't really need our phone right now. That's bad, Peter. So, if um, and, and welcome to our Thursday. I know you, you come on a Mondays. It's, it's good. On Thursdays, every last Thursday of the month, um, we have a different program, not just a, a, a talk, a, uh, what we usually explore. Sometimes our talks are more philosophical, sometimes more like a study format. Sometimes it's just like a dynamic, like last week we had a Q&A, um, and we have various. But one time in a month, uh, I have a partner, Cristiani Carmo. She comes all the way from Tampa. She is my meditator side. So we make a team. So we both talk about meditation spiritism. Meditation spiritism, they, it has everything to do with each other because uh, one complements the other, the other, it's part of the other. So it's, it's, it's just a, a great thing. So we try to explore that to actually do like a guided meditation. We, we have a program, so it's like a series. And the program that we are uh, implementing this semester, it's called the Path, the Truth, and the Life. So that is the Path, the Truth, and the Life. It's the motto of the Christ. You know, he, he came as a pure spirit and he left a legacy of, of a lot of, um, like a playbook, right? Like we, we call it here. He left us a playbook. And, 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 and spiritism comes to make expanding that and make like a, a rational a faith not just dogmatic uh, and, and, and just the philosophy aspect so we have the, the scientific the philo philosophical and we have the spiritual the you know not necessarily religious but you know the questions what who we are what we're doing here for so one within this this topic we're going to talk a little bit about love your enemies because that's how we want it to center every meditation we have to meditate with a purpose so there is about three stages on in, in us doing the meditation the first stage is because we are three-dimensional beings we're not just this this envelope this body here we have a pure spirit, which is in between. It's like a filter. There is more. There's about five, but let's just stick with the three. And then we have our most pure, more, um, more sensitive part, which is our actual spirit. That's you know the, the the housing of our feelings, our emotions, and our character, who we are, and we express within these two other bodies. One more, more um, subtle, and the other one more. <laughs> grows with more the physical right which is here so we need to the first part of the meditation is to let our mind be disassociated with this physical part and, and try to be doing like a uh, we go within and then we go and we disperse thoughts we disperse negativity and we try to find ourselves within once we are able to do that and, and we do a relaxation we do some breathing we do we do everything that's needed for us to be in a special place that we feel peaceful and serene not it's not easy sometimes to get in that perfect place but once you do it together we do it guided it's good and once you put a purpose into it it makes even better because we take that with us and we will meditate on our own, on our own time. And the idea is for when we come out of here, we take the message, we take the meditation that we do together, and we'll make the, the most of it, the best of it. I'm still shocked to what had happened um, with this um, recent massacre of these little children. Uh, this month is being very tough, um, you know, with um, shooting in a supermarket, um, killing innocent people because of hate or intolerance. That's why the topic today, um, we don't have a lecture format, but we, we need to expand a little bit. So when we meditate, we, we put purpose into it and we make that something something bigger 
than just the words. So I'm still shocked and I am in, in still in disbelief, but it's becoming the norm. I mean, we feel helpless, right? In fact, not just that we feel helpless, that we feel like, you know, what if I'm going to the supermarket one of these days or, you know, my kids going to school, it, it could happen to me. So it's like it's, it's becoming scarier. And I love the fact that the opening is so connected. What can we do to, to do our part? What can we do to decrease this level of anxiety? The message that Joanna DeAngelis gave to us here, and, and nothing is by coincidence, she opened saying, we can all give our contribution. We all matter, we all matter. We are all responsible for each other. We cannot live isolated and, and just numbed, just anesthesiated from the facts of reality. Everything's got a root cause. Everything's got a root cause. One of the root causes that it happens and it until it washes away, we have karma in, in this beloved country of ours here. We had a civil war when back in the 1865, half of the country was against the other half and it was very bloody. Hundreds of thousands of people, brothers and sisters, perish because of intolerance, because of not just difference of opinion, intolerance. And every war that we experience, not in, in everywhere, there is always this factor of intolerance. Intolerance. Intolerance that it turns into hate, it, that it turns into the most animalistic actions that we can do, destroying ourselves, destruction. So there is a spiritual force that acts within this contest of, of intolerance and hatred because we are spirits, because we're spirits. We, we have here um, some some of uh, some of the, the the works of assistance that we do for spirits we encounter spirits here that are stuck in time centuries ago they have discarnated they have moved on in their lives so instead of of renewing themselves and and coming back and they're still stuck with the same ideas with the same type of mentality that their truth is the only truth the world has to be according to the way they believe. They were stuck there. And they create so much negative energy that we see not just their, them reincarnating, but them still having so much power over easy praise that are so easily, like they say, you know, the uh, simple minds are easily amused so it is with the spiritual world. You know, if an empty mind that is just looking for materialistic things, it's easy to be unfortunately persuaded by this negative force. So we see this stuff happening and it will happen. But we can't put a stop to this. If we do exactly what Joanna told us to do, and that's what we're gonna talk about, that's what we're going to, we're going to meditate about, tolerance. Christ said, Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. But he didn't say everything. Because it's hard for, in, in, in Spiritism, which came later, we learned that it's hard for us naturally to love somebody who, who hurt us, who does, commits acts of violence. It is very difficult. It's not natural. However, it is a process. It starts with tolerance. If we find ourselves in a way that we can only control what we do and how we react to everything that it comes towards us, good or bad, we are working in tolerance. 
And once we exercise that, we apply that, we are in the first step to come to love. Our friend Albert Einstein, love this guy. Only a life lived for others is a life worth a while. Albert Einstein. There's only two ways to live your life. One is through nothing is a miracle. Other is though everything is a miracle. Meaning that we have to value life in all forms. We need each other. We need to tolerate each other. And this is the, 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 this is the biggest challenge because we are so diverse. And one of the beauties, and I am so, I'm so grateful for um, I live my life here in, in the United States for over, I came here 20, I was 22 years old and I am 55 now, so more than half of my life I've been here. This is the most generous country, the most civil society there is. It is a very powerful, democratic, and peaceful nation. And it's so beautiful how people can come together and overcome so many bad and so much evil because we are good. There is a question in the Spirit's books that says, how come the evil, it's, it's, so, it's so dominant? It's, how come the evil does so much damage? And, and, it, and the answer is like, it's because the good, us in general, the good people are timid. However, once we decide to take action, when we decide to do our part, to give our contribution, like Joanna says, we will turn this game around. We will change things around. Everything will be different. So it is only through tolerance. I was, I, I was going, I was in preparing this tonight, this this meditation, which um, we will. Um, our our talk is up for about. 15 minutes and then it's about 20 minutes of just meditation. Don't worry, I'm not gonna be talking here the whole night. But I was like, I was, I, I, I had a prayer and I said, you know, I, in preparing for for tonight, you know, I, I, you know, help me, good spirits, to to bring a message uh, uh, that we uh, we can share and it's, you know, it's um, it's powerful enough that we can we can do something about it. And, and and the answer was like just talk about tolerance. Just speak from your heart about tolerance, and 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 what is our responsibility? What we can do about you know a tragedy that just happened? What we can do about that? Um, and then, okay, I know I know what I'm going to talk about. Now I need to work the material, right? We we need to, and and um, and. Um, I had like in, in my bookshelf, this book came, it's like, it came right to me. It's just like, you know, this is the book. It's like I was like guided, this book. I opened the book. This is a book called In Life Goes On. This is a fantastic book, fantastic book. And I opened in a book in a part that I said, wow, this is exactly what we need to talk about. This was written by the spirit Andrea Lewis and psychographic by Francisco Xavier, Chico Xavier, Xavier, whatever you call. I'm just gonna give a little bit of a description of the, in the back here, very quick, so we know what the book is about. The book uh, presents a description of the human being after discarnation and demonstrate that in the beyond, the mental state of spirits directly impacts their existence there. I mean, we go to the spiritual world. Once we're, we're done here, we go to the spiritual world. It's not like we become saints overnight. <laughs> it's like there, there is this misconception. A lot of people say, oh, you know, it's like life is hard. So once I'm done here, I'm going to be, I think I deserve to be in a good place. Maybe I don't go to heaven. They're hanging out with all the angels. But I'm going to be in a good place. I'm going to see all my people, people I love, and, you know, things are going to be good we're going to continue being exactly what we're doing. 
If we're fixated with those thoughts, with those feelings, with those emotions, with that mentality, with that line of, of, of values, we're going to continue to be exactly the same. It, it all depends on us. So there's 26 chapters in the stories um, uh, uh, of real characters. So this is real. This is a real story. This is not a romance. This is not like a made, made up stuff. This is Andrea Luis uh, stay, um, he's like a reporter in the spiritual world. And he, br he brought the book, for instance, No Solar, one of his first book of his collection. He has more than 13 books in his collection called Life in the Spiritual World. And he has more books, but 13 books only giving a, a good report and a, a report of how life is. And he does a fantastic job. So, so there are real characters who receive the help of spirit friends upon discarnating. These friends encourage them to renew themselves spiritually through study and work in, or, in order to prepare to reveal and untangle the meaning of the lives they have just finished, thereby enable, enable them to pursue a more constructive course of behavior for their future. It teaches us to examine our lives continually, knowing that according to the laws of God, life does in fact go on, full of hope and effort, progress and accomplishment after death. So this is a book full of drama. Drama, just like our drama. And the drama continues. <laughs> life goes on. Our drama goes on. We take the drama with us. We take everything with us. It came to a point that in, in my, my mission here tonight is for us to talk a little bit about tolerance and for us to meditate about that, okay? When we, when we get to the part of meditation, we go through the steps. But it's important for us to put meaning into that. So I did not have words for it uh, to, to, to bring this message. And when I came to this book and I opened this book, I actually opened the book in two pages, flip on two pages. It's almost to the end of the book. It comes to a point that the writer, Andrea Luis, he, he sort of like, this is a lot. This is a lot. It's so much. There is so much intolerance. How come all of this, how come all of these people are going through this? So he is inspired to give us, us here on earth, incarnated, a message of tolerance and what to do. So I thought it was brilliant. It's better in his words than in mine. So I just beg for your um, patience because it's quite... Um, page and a half long. It's just a page long. So I'm going to read very slowly. This is a message from Andrew Lewis to us right now, right here. Brothers and sisters on the earth, in the midst of the tribulations of human existence, learn to tolerate and to forgive. No matter how hurt or slandered, offended or cursed, forget evil by doing good. You who have your, your trust betrayed or your spirit torn in traps of darkness, light the light of love wherever you are. Friends, he's talking to us. Friends who have been vilified or insulted in your most sublime intentions, forget these offenses and bless the tribulations that mold your heart for the greater world. Sisters who have suffered indescribable torments in your flesh, despised by smiling tormentors who left you distraught and anguished after having lured you with false promises. Bless. Bless those who have destroyed your dreams. Single mothers, banished from home and beaten by life, fell, failing falling into prostitution for having kept in your womb the children of your dis disgrace without resorting to an abortion. 
suffering mothers who are many times denied the right to defend yourselves, a right extended even to criminals in prisons. Forgive your tormentors. Parents who bear your bruised shoulders, the burden of thankless children. Children who endure in flesh and soul the tyranny and brutality of intensive parents and spouses, pierced with daggers of misunderstanding and cruelty without the walls of your home, acquit each other. Sufferers of all kinds, all of us, sufferers of all kinds of obsessive conditions, we veils of compassion and hope over the unfortunate spirits, incarnate or discarnate, who torment you at every hour. People harmed and per or persecuted all over the world, forgive those who have become instruments of your afflictions and tears. When you feel the temptation to strike back, and we, it's hard for us not to not react, right? Remember, one who encouraged us to love our enemies and to pray for those who persecute and slander us. Remember the Christ of God, who preferred to be condemned rather than to condemn because those who practice evil know not what they are doing. Know for certain that the laws of death do not exempt anyone. And do not forget that one day of your great farewell to those who, say, who stay behind in this place of trials, it is only through the blessings of love and peace, of a clear conscience, that you will find the deliverance you have longed for. So it's going to come a day that we are going to have nothing else but just our conscience. So what is the proposal? What do you think about this message? It's a little long, but very appropriate, right? I thought it was, once I got to say, no, this is too long of a message. And I read until the end. And then, and that's what we're talking about, love your enemies. Because we have, as we go through life, none of us, none of us are going to go through our journey without having that crashing feeling of somebody doing us wrong, somebody hurting us, somebody that we loved but also hurt us. Guess what? That somebody doing that could be ourselves too. Most of the time we put ourselves in the place of the victim. But victim and offender, offenders, we are, in fact, we're the same. We're the same. So by, by, by praying for those who we hate or who might hate us, we are pretty much clearing ourselves. We need, we need to we need to daily do a meditation for our own peace. We have to promote peace. And I'll, I'll give you the best time to do that. You can, do, you, you can meditate many times. You can pray many times. Is pray and meditation the same? Pray and meditation, it depends. I would say the meditation, can, you can include the prayer to it. But the meditation, it's... I would say that the prayer is the end result and the meditation is the process. Because when you pray, if you just pray, just speaking words, God, you know, please help me here and there. I'm a good person. You know, this is, this is happening. If, if you don't put your heart, if you don't put your soul into a prayer, if you don't really mean it from the fiber of your cells, from from whatever you are made of, if you don't have a heart of gratitude for life, your prayer will mean, will mean not very much. It will mean something. It's not like it's, it's, it's not worth anything. It's worth because you at least you tried. But it will not reach. It will not make too much of a difference. It will take too long. It will be pretty much just in a linear mode. You want your, your prayer to go in a vertical mode. You want it to 
get lighter. So the meditation, and there is many forms, and we're not here to teach anyone how to meditate. We're just sharing. When you meditate, you, 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 you're talking to your mind. You're giving a command to your mind because our mind, it's the commander of everything we do. You are disciplining your thoughts. And in that particular time, you give your body, your mind a command, and you will do that. Once you find yourself in ease, when you find yourself a little more calm, and you tell your thoughts, you know what? Enough of all of this going on. That's it. I'm taking a break. I'm taking a break. You tell your mind that now I just want to be in peace. You give that command, and that will be complied by it. Because you know what? You mean it. If we mean it, we're in charge. If we don't care, we're not in charge. We're just watching. We're still responsible to everything that's happening. It's just that we kind of, we just delegate. You know, we, stay, we stay in the back seat. But once we're in charge, we move mountains. We do miracles, just like Einstein said, because life is a miracle. The power that we have, we are a powerhouse. We need each other. That's why with others together, we go far. Once you're in a meditation state, once you find the peace and tranquility, you can you 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 open your your um, very spirit of if you like to call your uh, your aria, your vibration, your something that it's not physical. You are in a different dimension and your thoughts are going to reach where you want it to reach you're going to you're going to be able to communicate directly to god because that's you know it and and, and, and it's like we think god is there and uh, you know but god is, is right here it's just like freeing ourselves just being there so first we need to to do this, this, this exercise of, of physically relaxing, then being aware, being mindful. That's awareness and, and mindfulness is the second part of the meditation. And the third part is just, you just speak from your heart. You, you, and that, that's the part that is actually a prayer. You know, you want it to be very uh, like a, a traditional prayer. You can do that, but without Put in your, your essence to it, it's really not going to be a prayer. So that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to put a, a very short video of nature. I'm going to ask you to watch that video, and I want you, all of us, to, with open eyes, transport yourself there because nature it's like god is so good to us god is so good that once you want to have like you know our we're <laughs> our brain the period is it's an expert in neuroscience here but our brains is it's made of images and so god gave something for us to connect in a very easy way and he gave us nature beautiful nature mountains lakes, rivers, oceans, trees, flowers, animals, everything. And it's all around us. It's like God is all around us. So, so physically, first, we're going to do this, this visual. Then I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. And then we're going to relax. After we relax, we're going to meditate. First, for our peace and serenity. And then we're going to include everyone else in the world to have a heart of tolerance, to have an attitude of tolerance, for us to tolerate and live among each other like brothers and sisters, like we love, like we belong, because in fact, we are the ungrateful children. We are so ungrateful because there is so much beauty and there's so much blessings all around us. 
that we put ourselves so much in the center. Poor me, poor me. I want this, this doesn't happen, and this and that, and, 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 and our own pride, our own selfishness, isolate us from this reality of connecting one another. It is not, if you want to connect to a superior force, if you want to connect to the best of, of what we can connect with in, 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 in being in a special place that it's just love and peace, we have to start doing our part right here, right here. It's like Andrea Luis, um, um, when he was in the spiritual world, he, he actually is in the other, he, other his books. He's, he tells us that he was, he, he spent a lot of time in the dark zones, about seven years, seven, eight years. Then he was rescued. And then after he was rescued, he started to work. The first time that he started to work, and he worked in the regeneration uh, ward there. His first shift was 24 hours. He worked so hard. He worked with this nurse, and he was just a helper. Imagine, he was a doctor and a nurse, but there he was just an assistant and, and a, an apprentice. He worked 24 hours, but he worked so hard and he meant so much that he was the first time that he was actually finding himself. And then he, when he went to sleep, he was in so much peace of the, for the work that he had done, for the good that he had done, for doing everything with meaning, that in the spiritual world, and he was sleeping, he went to sleep, and he was transported to a different dimension. Even if there is different dimensions there. Where his mother was. And he went to get together with his mom. And it was amazing. And he tells this experience that was so sublime. It was so, it was the most peaceful experience that he ever had. And it was amazing. So with, with work, with, with our heart in the right place, with our mind in the right place, we can do that. So let's do that. If you can dim the lights a little bit, I'm going to. Yes, please. Okay. okay, so let's just start to calm yourselves down. And let's watch this because that's the, pl the place that we want it to be transported to. Beautiful sunrise. As we're watching this short video before we start our meditation, start breathing a little more profoundly. Allow yourselves to be transported right here, just like if you were flying around here in these mountains. It doesn't matter where it is. We just we were just gifted enough to be transported there tonight. This is as we transport ourselves here. We have this just there, just visualize yourself, just there observing all of this. You're already there, you already arrived there, sitting by this trunk of waters, just like in the Psalm 23. You, God, you refresh my soul. You take me to trunk of waters. So peaceful. Appreciate all of this beautiful nature. Take everything in. Be generous to yourself. Continue. 
to explore in this valley of many mountains and rivers. So, going through emotions, the movement of life all around us. transforming nature, beautiful flowers, they're just there enjoying. Find yourself just collecting those little petals, just, just be there. And this soft music slowly come inside you. So you start washing away thoughts, and now you are walking in this valley. There is no one there but us, and this is our encounter with the Creator through His creation. sitting down under a tree, smelling the smells of the breeze and all of these different pure smells and essences. Just take your time. Just go take your time walking through this forest. Hear the, the noise of this water just hitting the rocks, and, and everything is so serene. Everything is so serene. Continue breathing slowly. your eyes or you can keep your eyes open whichever it's better if you find yourself with thoughts coming through your mind you can open your eyes and take yourself back into that place continue being in that place and breathing breathing so intensely and with purpose Now we find ourselves very peaceful. And in order for us to have complete awareness and consciousness of how much we are worth and how much we deserve to have this encounter with God through nature, we tell our minds right now, how much we are loved. We are loved by this Creator who made us perfect. Imperfect in our journey to purified our concepts, our values, our morals, wash away the negativity that exists within us as we are incarnated, as we go through our troubles, as we go through our temptations, as we go through our sufferings, we still say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, universe. Whatever you want to call, God, Supreme Intelligence, primary cause of everything. As long as you surrender, as long as we surrender right now, we surrender to 
this divine power that governs our life, all the life in this world, in this universe. We surrender to it. We surrender with gratitude. And we say thank you so much. Thank you so very much. We are so grateful. We are so grateful. We are so grateful that not only you gave us all of this, you gave us masters. You gave us the master of the masters. You gave us the Christ. You gave us so many of his disciples that came after him. You gave us science. You gave us knowledge. And you've given us opportunities after opportunities for growth, for discovering who we really are, where we belong. And we appreciate all of that. We appreciate all of that. With our minds and our hearts so grateful and finding ourselves in that beautiful valley with rivers, waterfalls, birds, mountains. We find so refreshed. We are so refreshed. This is the serenity that we can have every time we put our minds to it. Allow yourselves to be very, very comfortable in your chair and just be there. We deserve it. We are so loved. We are finding our way to do better. One day at a time. this time start open up our hearts our spiritual strength to promote our inner peace to surround the loved ones our homes the place we work everything that is part of our lives right now we want to extend this peace this love this care that we are receiving because it is in giving that we receive. It is in forgiving that we are forgiven. Let's give all of this immense joy of being in love, creation of a perfect Father wants and will help us to be just as good as we were meant to, as perfect as we were to, to be closer and closer to the goodness that we are meant to be, to be rewarded for every sacrifice we have made, to be rewarded for every learning lesson we have passed and to be rewarded for the gratitude in failing our lessons and restarting over again. That gratitude is powerful. That love is big. It fills 
our whole being that we are transborning, we are overflowing. Just again in Psalm 23 of King David, our cup overflows, our soul, our spirit overflows with this joy. We feel so blessed. And we know that we have spiritual friends that are next to us every single day of our lives to help us, to strengthen us, to inspire us with good thoughts, to remind us how good we are, no matter when we fail. We are granted that. We are blessed with that friend, with that brother, with that sister. And that spiritual being loves us so much that stays with us because God never left us alone. We were never alone. We we're always surrounded by His love. And He wants to make sure that we know that, that we feel that, that we understand. And we appreciate. In appreciating all of that and feeling this joy overflowing our souls, we share that in our household. We make a visit in our minds to all of those who we love. Just like flipping a picture album and seeing their smiley faces and just sending love to all of them. And we feel blessed. Now that we have promoted all of this peace, we have shared a small part of what we have received. Now, in reflecting upon tolerance, loving our enemies, and giving our contribution to tolerate, to forgive, one day, hopefully sooner than later, we love, we really love those who had harmed us, those who had done evil to us or to others. Let's look inside of our souls again and refill ourselves with all the love that God is pouring on us, the energy, so pure, so intense. We're going to start opening up our hearts. We're gonna start opening up our hearts and our spirits, knowing that we are not perfect knowing that we had done wrong. We had been the enemy. We had been in the other side. And now we find ourselves just blessed because we were forgiven. We were forgiven. Let's forgive ourselves. Let's fill our bank of love with so much credit. We deserve that credit. We were blessed with that credit. Let's take it in, all of that, and appreciate how much God is merciful. Despite everything that we might have done that we don't even remember, we're giving the blessing of forgetfulness. Of 
big eraser erase all of the wrongs that we have done and we find ourselves in a better place but it is time for us to give our contribution starting with tolerance let's forgive ourselves let's love ourselves in order to forgive and love others Let's vibrate all of this love to our enemies, people who have done wrong to us. Let's vibrate tolerance that these acts of violence are done out of ignorance, out of selfishness, out of pride. Those are also the enemies who live within. Selfishness, pride, self-righteousness. It's our own enemy. We must recognize that that enemy needs to be renewed. The old man and the old woman must go so a new man, a new woman, renewed with the love and compassion, forgiveness, can start fresh. Let's forgive all of those who had offended us, who had done wrong. Let's flip an album again in our minds and let's see their faces flipping over those pictures. Yes, my brother. Yes, my sister. I hated you one day, but now I'm going to let go. Maybe I'm not going to forgive you 100% yet, but I'm going to tolerate you because I want to forgive you. I know it is hard, but I want to give the, take the first step. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. I want to love you. I know it's going to happen. I'm taking responsibility. And I pray for God with all my heart, with all my soul, that you find peace and you find light, you find compassion, that you find God the same way that I did, and you appreciate life. I forgive you. I forgive you. Help us, God, to forgive every day, not just now. Help us, God, to pray for our country, for our world. Help us, God, send love and peace and light to all of those spirits right now that are confused, are being just victimized by the forces of evil. Let them know that they are also loved and they can take charge of their lives. Oh God, please help us by our actions, by our contribution every day, the moment that we walk out of our house, the moment that we step out of our beds every day, let us be the first one to give the example of tolerance, of peace, of compassion and forgiveness. Because it is in giving that we receive. It is in forgiving that we are forgiven. And it, it is in dying that we live forever. But one or day come, 
when our day comes to leave this earth, let us live here with our conscience clean, knowing that we did everything we could in our power to help ourselves, to help our neighbors, to help this world to be better. And just by shining your love, God, by showing everyone how grateful I am, how forgiving I am, every word that comes out of my mouth may be blessed for good, for peace. God, help us every day. Help us take this message. May this light, may all of this that we are receiving be spread as we dream tonight, as we go to sleep tonight, as we wake up, as we do everything we do, make us be your instrument of peace and love. And for all of those spirits that discarnated in these tragic events, we know that you are comforted. We send our hearts to you at this moment for any one of those who are still lost or have vengeance in their hearts. May the light and the peace of Jesus, the forgiveness that He taught us how to do, how to react, how to behave, how to live the truth and the life. May His message reach you right now. May you be in peace. May we have better days. May we have a society with governments responsible and compassionate. May we love each other more and more. Let's keep breathing. Yes. Mm -hmm.